Hello again, my friends. I'm happy to bring you another Silver Senior Silver Screen special biography on an old classic black and white movie, A Streetcar Named Desire. But before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. If you haven't already seen this movie and love the old time classics like I do, I highly recommend it. Hi, I'm Lucy and this is Pancake. Thank you for joining us for another video and if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. And just in case you haven't seen it, please know there will be spoilers in this video. I love doing bios on old classic movies, so if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more similar to this one, please comment below or let me know which one is your favorite or which one you'd like me to do a bio on, and I'll try my best to do it. Also, please watch this video to the end to see some really cool behind the scenes photos, some that you've probably never seen before. And I'm also including some interesting facts and trivia too. And so without further ado, through the magic of my computer, I've colorized some of the old black and white pictures from some of my favorite scenes, and hopefully they're some of your favorites too, from this movie, which I find that you can see more details in them. Please let me know what you think. This movie is a drama that was released in the USA in 1951 and it stars one of my favorite male stars, Marlon Brando, and also Vivian Lee, who was best known for starring in the movie Gone with the Wind. And some of the co-stars were Kim Hunter, Carl Malden, and others. It was directed by Aaliyah Kazan, written by Tennessee Williams and produced by Warner Brothers. This movie won four Oscars. It was filmed in location in New Orleans, Louisiana. The movie is about disturbed Blanche Dubois moves in with her sister-in-law in New Orleans and is tormented by her brutish brother-in-law while her reality crumbles around her. And now I've got some juicy trivia gossip for you. Vivian Lee, who suffered from bipolar disorder in real life, later had difficulties in distinguishing her real life from that of Blanche Dubois. Fitted t-shirts could not be bought at the time, so Marlon Brando's apparel had to be washed several times and then the back stitched up to appear tightly over the actor's chest. There were lots of clashes on the set between Vivian Lee and her fellow cast members. Vivian Lee was only 36 at the time of this filming, 
and she had to be made up to look older. Nine members of the original Broadway cast, Marlon Brando, Kim Hunter, Carl Mulden, Rudy Bond, Nick Dennis, Peg Hilius, Richard Garrick, Anne Daria, and Edna Thomas repeated their roles in the film. A highly unusual decision at the time and even today when original cast of plays are often completely replaced for the film's version. However, Vivian Lee, who played Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind in 1939, was selected to play Blanche Dubois over Jessica Tandy to add star power to the picture. Marlon Brando had not yet achieved full stardom in films. He would be billed under Lee in the film's credits. Jessica Tandy was originally slated to play Blanche after creating the role on Broadway. The role was given to Vivian Lee after Olivia de Havilland refused it. Since Lee had more box office appeal, de Havilland turned down the role because her then-husband, Marcus Goodrich, advised against her playing it. Vivian Lee had already played Blanche in the first London production of the play under the direction of her then-husband, Laurence Olivier. She later said that Olivier's direction of that production influenced her performance in the film more than Aaliyah Kazan's direction of the film did. The production code centers demanded 68 script changes from the Broadway staging, while the interference of the Catholic Legion of Decency led to even further cuts most of them having to do with references to homosexuality and rape. In his memoirs, Tennessee William wrote that he liked the film, but felt it was slightly marred by the Hollywood ending. When the film was previewed in Santa Barbara in 1951, the director, Elia Kazan State, was a then-obscure contract starlet, Marilyn Monroe, whom he introduced to Arthur Miller, her future husband. Marlon Brando was paid a sizable $75,000 for his work, partially because of his insider scoop that hailed Brando's acting style as the most revolutionary thing to hit Hollywood since the talkies. Vivian Lee received a $100,000 salary making her the highest paid English screen actress of the day. For the London stage production, Vivian Lee bleached her famous brunette locks. She wore bleached wigs throughout the film though, since Blanche Dubois was supposed to have ragged looking hair and look like someone who had led a rough life. Because she did not trust the American hairdressers, Lee airmailed her wigs back to London to be cleaned and redressed by wig maker and theatrical entrepreneur Stanley Hall. To prepare for the part of Stanley Kowalski, Marlon Brando began a daily workout routine at a local gym where he exercised with weights to build up his chest and biceps. Prior to this role, the actor was not known for his muscle-bound physique, and when Truman Capote first observed Brando's transformation, he said it was as if a stranger's head had been attached to the brawny body, as in certain counterfeit photographs. Despite giving the definitive portrayal of Stanley Kowalski, Marlon Brando said he privately detested the character. However, it should be added that Brando was an eccentric character who loved misleading people and playing pranks. Aaliyah Kazan worked closely with the production designer to create the authenticity sordid look. They had the walls of Stanley and Stella's home built in small sections that could be removed so that as Blanche feels more constricted and threatened inside the Kowalski home and the walls could literally move in and create a claustrophobic tension within the space. 
There was some bad blood between Vivian Lee and Marlon Brando at the beginning of the shoot, but these conflicts had nothing to do with acting style. Brando was simply annoyed at Lee's typical British manners and stuffiness. The two acting giants eventually became friends as the shoot progressed. Brando's dead on perfect imitation of Lee's then husband, Laurence Olivier's Henry V, did much to break the ice between the two. By the time the film was made, the Desire streetcar line had been converted to buses, but streetcars were still used in other parts of the city. The authorities were able to lend the production a car with the desired destination sign for the opening sequences of Blanche's arrival in the city. Early in development, William Wyler had expressed an interest in adapting the play with Betty Davis in the part of Blanche. Robert Mitchum was offered the role of Stanley Kowalski, but RKO refused to let him do it. With Carl Malden winning the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor and Kim Hunter winning Best Supporting Actress, this is the first time that both supporting acting categories were won by the same film. Aaliyah Kazan originally resisted the idea of directing the film adaptation as he felt that he had achieved everything he wanted with the stage version. It was only after Tennessee Williams implored him to take on the assignment that Kazan signed on. While Vivian Lee was playing Blanche, her real-life husband, Laurence Olivier, was also in Hollywood filming Carrie in 1952 co-starring Jennifer Jones and directed by William Wilder. On one occasion, the celebrity couple dined with Marlon Brando. In an interview many years later, Kim Hunter said that Marlon Brando claimed to have sought inspiration for his performance by thinking back to how his own father tended to treat one and all at the family home during Brando's childhood. For the Broadway production, several Hollywood stars were considered for the role of Stanley Kowalski, including John Garfield, Burt Lancaster, Van Heflin, Edmund O'Brien, John Lund. Marlon Brando, still a relative newcomer to the stage, was originally rejected for the role because he was considered too young and too handsome. It was only because of Brando's agent, Edie Van Cleve, that Brando got a chance to read for Tennessee Williams, who came away from the audition with the assurance that Brando was perfect for the part. John Garfield turned down the role of Stanley Kowalski because he didn't want to be overshadowed by the female lead. While working on the film, Marlon Brando shared an apartment with Jay Cantor, two other MCA representatives, and future film star Tony Curtis. That Marlon Brando was passed over for an Academy Award in the one performance that almost single-handedly started the method acting movement and is considered one of the best performances ever on film is considered one of the great travesties in the history of Hollywood. This is the second film in which Vivian Lee won the Academy Award for Best Actress for playing a Southern Belle who loses her family fortune and becomes destitute. The first film was Gone with the Wind in 1939. And unlike Stanley Kowalski, Kim Hunter said that Marlon Brando was a more sensitive person on the film set. If you like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now and be blessed.